Hello, kitties. It's Brock from Cocktail Party Massacre. And if you listened in last week, you got the chance to meet our latest contestant, Matt Connor. Not only is he a brilliant psychiatrist, but Matt is also the panel director for the North Carolina Comic Con system. And, in my opinion, most importantly, he's a huge horror fan. He joins us today to try to earn the title of Final Girl against our slasher in three rounds of trivia based on one of his favorite horror movies, 1988's Killer clowns from outer space killer clowns was written by charles and stephen uh, kyoto and directed by stephen kyoto it stars grant kramer as mike suzanne snyder as debbie john allen nelson as officer dave john vernon as officer mooney and michael siegel and peter lacasi as the terenzi brothers now last week matt and i talked about why we love this movie so damn much uh, from its minimalist sets its amazing creature design and its bonkers plot there's a lot to love now if you you haven't seen it yet you'll probably want to pause watch and come back to us but if you're already a fan of the movie get ready to be a fan of matt's because uh, he's such an amazing guy uh, but you better be a fan quickly because pickens and i are about to try to kill him Welcome to Cocktail Party Massacre. I'm your host, Brock. And I'm your killer, Pickens. What's up? (laughs) And uh, we are joined today by... A very special guest. Hi, y'all. My name is Matt Connor. It's good to be back. Yeah. Um, Thank you so much for coming back to Kilrook Manor to talk about uh, what I feel and uh, uh, apparently what you feel is an amazing movie. Killer clowns from outer space. I can third that sort of thruple, just like the movie. Just like in the movie. <gasps> it was. Yeah. So tell so Matt concocted a very, very delicious cocktail for us, which I've had several of now. <laughs> Matt, why don't you give us the ingredients? Sure. This was taken from the book Let's Get Monsters Smashed. Uh, it is called the Harlequin Hooch. And it is a very, very, very sweet cotton candy themed uh, little shot. Uh, You start with a handful of cotton candy that you punch down real small and put in the bottom of a shot glass, drizzle that with grenadine. Meanwhile, in a shaker, mix three quarters of an ounce of cotton candy vodka and three quarters of an ounce of white uh, white cranberry juice shaken over ice, poured into the glass, then you garnish with cotton candy as clown hair and a maraschino cherry to pretend to be the nose and drink it, of course, through a crazy straw just like the clowns would. And I will say, guys, Brock hates sweet cocktails, but he actually did enjoy the taste of this one. So I did. It is incredible. Well, because kill- is feat. Yeah, Killer Clowns from Outer Space reminds me of my childhood, and this drink tastes kind of like really good spiked Kool-Aid. Um, so yeah, I was expecting the Kool-Aid man to bust through. Oh yeah. But, um, but luckily he did not because I could not make those repairs to my house. So, (laughs) but thank you for the, uh, for the cocktail recipe book for one thing. And it's called Monster Smashed. Let's get Monster Smashed. Yes. Yes. It's going it. to make my job very easy for a little while. Yeah. Because there is a lot of recipes for a lot of future movies I saw in there, which I'm like, yes, I can make a drink now. <laughs> yes. And uh, so thank you for that. Thank you yes. also for the cocktail. It was and is delicious. Um, but let's uh, move on and get down to why we're really here. And for Pickens and me, uh, our goal is to kill you. Uh, in three rounds of Killer Clowns Trivia. So, for our new listeners, here's how this all works. Uh, Matt has been invited to a cocktail party here at Kilrook Manor, but this cocktail party is about to turn into a cocktail party massacre because an unexpected visitor has just crashed the party. A slasher whose taste for blood and carnage can only be assuaged by his obsession with horror trivia. In other words, if Matt wants to leave this cocktail party in one piece, he'll have to outrun the slasher by outwitting him in trivia. 
Each correct answer gets Matt farther away from the slasher, but if the slasher answers correctly, he takes two steps. Uh, now, to even the playing field a little bit, we do have a pregame round, and we call that the 60-second synopsis. And as you can imagine, uh, if Matt can get through as much of the plot with as much detail as possible in 60 seconds, he will be awarded extra bonus steps ahead of our killer. There's going to be a max of six steps awarded. Um, and uh, Matt, do you have any questions about uh, the rules and regulations and so on? This is the part that's maybe the most nervous, you guys. <laughs> You're, You're not, not alone. alone. In, You're not alone in this, yes. All right. Well, before we do the 60-second synopsis, uh, Igor, why don't you tell Matt what he stands to win today if he becomes a final girl. Tonight, Matt has a chance to win a beautiful enamel pin from the brilliant artists at thehorrorcorner.com. What makes this pin so special, you ask? This horrific pin beautifully recreates one of killer clowns from outer space's creepiest scenes. It features Jumbo the Clown, who's using the corpse of a recently killed Officer Mooney as a ventriloquist dummy. Matt, you'll be the dummy if you don't try like hell to win this gorgeous pin. It will look just dandy on your shirt, your coat, your book bag, wherever you stick your collection of pins. Yes, this collectible enamel pin will be yours if the fright is right. (laughs) All right. Thank you, Igor. Oh, surprise for you. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you so much, Igor. Now back to the dungeon. Uh, Matt? Yes? Are you ready for your 60-second synopsis? Let's say yes. All right. The 60-second uh, synopsis begins in three, two, one. Mike and Debbie are making out and they see a shooting star and they chase it down and it turns out it's actually a spaceship that looks like a big top and inside there are these cotton candy cocoons where they're liquefying the bodies of the farmer Gene, his dog, Pooh Bear, and Joe Lombardo. They're chased out of the big top by alien clowns and go see Debbie's ex, Officer Dave Hansen. He sends Debbie home, but he and Mike go investigate and they find cotton candy carnage all over the makeout point. While they're doing that, the clowns are in Crescent Cove killing people in a variety of scary, funny circus ways, including a puppet show with real ray guns, driving a car off the road in an invisible car, and eating a bunch of people with a shadow puppet. Dave goes to the the police station and finds that a cop has killed fascist officer Curtis Mooney and turned him into a puppet, and it's really scary. And then Dave shoots him in the nose, the the clown, not the puppet, and the nose explodes and he realizes that's how you kill the clowns. Debbie gets kidnapped by clowns, and Mike, Dave, and the Drenzy brothers chase them to an abandoned amusement park where they've relocated their ship and killed the guard with acid pies. They're trapped by Clownzilla, who then tries to kill them, but Dave pops his nose with a badge, the clown dies, the ship explodes, and everyone survives. Vibes. Uh, <laughs> oh, wow. And time. Damn it. No, that was amazing. Oh, no, girl, you like basically got through the whole movie. Have you been practicing? I've been practicing a lot. Ask many, many people. Um, okay, so listeners, if you think that Matt was reading from a paper or anything, he was not. It, it, he actually wasn't, no. That's pretty impressive. Um, and also what's impressive for the kitties at home, you can't see what Matt is wearing, but Pickens, why don't you describe his t-shirt? Girl, it is like just incredible. I am seeing like Toto from Wizard of Oz with a My Little Brony with like the T-Rex from Jurassic Park all filled under a rainbow. It is amazing, and it's purple. It's yeah, so it's it's like a, a, a little unicorn is piggybacking on a terrain Dinosaurus Rex, and then a little Yorkie is piggybacking on top of the unicorn, and there's a that's that's, that's really a thing of wonder. This is what my heart looks like. Aw, mm-hmm. girl, yes, yeah. I am here for it. Well, we might see what your heart looks like in the next three rounds of this trivia, oh, and we no. got you like a pig. Okay, so Pickens, we're running the algorithm, right? The uh, the really complicated, the really complicated algorithm. How many uh, steps ahead of uh, of the slasher does Matt? Yet. Zero points because I've only seen this movie once. You've seen it a million times. No, I'm no! actually I'm just, no. I will say you out of all like the sixty second synopsis, I think you're one of the best. Thank so you. I'm actually going to give you 
Six points. Oh my god! You oh my god! You, wow! You bas- he basically got to the end. Like, yes. He, he summarized pretty much like the whole movie. Now, were you hypnotized by his shirt? Is that why? I mean, that's a little to do with it. <laughs> yeah. All right. Well, that and I've, I'm back on like you know dry January's over, so I'm a little looser than usual. <sighs> yeah. Okay. Well, so so we have it six steps ahead, okay. and um, let's let's keep going because the slasher is ready to slash. This is our first round of trivia, and it's anyone's game. And that means, Matt, that uh, anyone can ring in. There's no penalty for uh, doing uh, for giving a wrong uh, answer. Uh, but as uh, just to remind you, uh, if you get something right, you get a step ahead. If Pickens gets something right as the slasher, he gets two steps ahead. So he could gain on you rather quickly. Are you ready? Everyone? Uh, yes. Let's let the kitties at home know what your buzzer sounds like. Mine is... And mine is... <laughs> so, Matt, why don't you do your buzzer again? That's ah, incredible. Law and order. That I love incredible. it. That is incredible. Okay. So, question one. Let's start with a who can get closer question. So the idea here is that you don't have to be on the money. Uh, You just have to get as close to the right response as possible. Um, According to betweenthenumbers.net, based on the average size of clowns and the average size of clown cars, how many clowns should be able to fit inside a clown car? Pickens. Okay, I'm going to say seven clowns. All right. I'm going to say 10 clowns. Matt, you are closer. Okay. But still so far away. No. What? The number is 40. What? 40 clowns. 40 clowns. Oh four zero. God. With or without shoes? <laughs> With or without pants? <laughs> yeah. With well, or without. stack. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. All right. Uh, so thank you, Matt. You were closer, so you get a step ahead. Okay. Question number two. And uh, this is not specific to the movie, um, but we'll get into the movie-specific stuff after this, I promise. Mm -hmm. Uh, Which infamous American assassin was from a circus family? John Wilkes Booth. That is right. (sighs) I don't really know any other assassins. (laughs) Well, that's the only one you needed to know in this case. All right, so in the movie, uh, we see all the lovers at Lover's Lane, and then those damn Terenzi brothers with their ice cream truck come to Lover's Lane, and they're hawking all kinds of delicious-sounding confections, including Icy Wicies, Fudgy Wudgies, and which of the following? So this is multiple choice. Fire Quackers, Nut Buster Bars, or Lick a Stick? Lick a Stick? That is right. Good job. Question number four. What does the old-timer think landed in his backyard? He thinks it's Haley's Comet. That is correct. (laughs) Question number five. Uh, What was the order in which Mike presses the big top elevator buttons? This is multiple choice. So was it bottom button, middle button, top button, middle button, top button? (laughs) Or was it bottom button, middle button, bottom button? Or was it top button, top button, middle, bottom button? Option B, the middle one. That is incorrect. Option A. That is correct. All right. That was the end of our very first round. Uh, And Matt has 10 steps. Pickens has two steps. But... The second round is called Deathmatch, and it's called Deathmatch because uh, the person with the lowest number of steps gets to answer first. Which is finally me again. Which is Pickens. Um, so We're Pickens, you'll, you'll get the opportunity to answer first, and if you get it right, you, you keep control of the board, and you'll get pitched the next question. If you get it wrong, Matt gets the uh, opportunity to answer, and if he gets it right, then he gets control of the board. All right. Let's do this, baby. Okay. okay. So, Debbie likens the inside of the Big Top spaceship as what kind of factory? Oh, Jesus. Oh, God, I don't know. Um, a cotton candy factory. That is right. Oh, my God. Ah! <laughs> Question number seven. Uh, fill in the blank. Okay. Popcorn? Why popcorn? Popcorn? 
Because everybody needs a good hit of poppers. <laughs> that is incorrect. <laughs> but I have a feeling I'm looking at Matt's face. Because they're clowns. Oh. That's right. Because they're clowns. That's why. Duh. All right. Question number eight is for Matt. Uh, according to the hand-painted road sign uh, that the killer clowns walk past, where are the clowns headed and how far away is it? They are walking five miles to Crescent Cove. That is right. So question number nine. John Vernon, who plays Officer Curtis Mooney, the ornery teen-hating policeman, did not have a role in which of the following Clint Eastwood movies? Mm. A, Play Misty for Me. B, Dirty Harry, or C, The Outlaw Josie Wales. A, he was in both of the other ones. That is right. Matt, have you been looking at my questions when I wasn't looking? No, I've been studying a lot. (laughs) Okay. All right. Question number 10, last question of the round. Uh, What is Mike's last name? Tobacco. That is right. Do they ever actually say that in the movie, though? (laughs) Once. Once. Okay, because I was looking on IMDb, and I was like, his last name is Tobacco? I never heard that in the movie. I just saw it in the end credits. I don't remember it in the movie, but... I think it was referenced... It was around the time that they go back to the police station at first. Yeah. So we get, like, through the original time at the Big Top without it. And Mike Tobacco was a friend of the director's growing up, and he was this apparently wild and crazy guy who at one point had this inflatable raft that he went out on the Long Island Sound and got so lost that the Coast Guard had to bring him in. Mm -hmm. So it was a joke about him. The couple are making out in an inflatable raft with a bunch of patches all over it to kind of suggest that story that their friend was in. That explains it because the inflatable raft thing in the movie was just very like... But, but, but the fuck is this? I think everyone should bring a rubber on their date, but that would be very uncomfortable. That's a little too much. That's overkill. I think that's a great idea, like, to put a raft in the back of your truck so you're not on the hard, like, hard surface of the tr- truck or the yeah, car. Yeah, but a raft is hard, too, and your skin sticks to it, so you want to leave all your yeah. clothes on. Oh, that's true. You get sweaty and As sticky. someone who's yeah. been fucked in a truck before, it's fine. The truck is fine. Yeah. I mean, a little padding for your knees, and really, after that, you're good. Okay. Well, I'll take your word for it. Uh, so at the end of this round, Pickens, you have a lot of catching up to do. Ideal. Uh, Matt, you have 14 points. Pickens has four. I got it. Yeah, you know, got to gotta run it, babe. Well, let's take a quick break uh, and oh, let's take a quick break and we'll be back right after this. Whew. Hey, my name is Caleb, and I'm the host of Macabre Media Podcast, a weekly podcast that reviews literally anything that has to do with horror, from movies to video games and anything in between. If you only have a 20-minute drive or you're on your 15-minute break, then we have some episodes you can squeeze in. The show focuses on informative punctuality, but we got it all. If you also have an hour to kill, the show has guests on at least twice a month to talk about their favorite media or horror they're a part of. Follow us on Twitter at Macabre Media Pod and subscribe wherever you want to listen to my shitcast except SoundCloud because I'm not paying for that. In the meantime, enjoy this episode and get spooked. Welcome back, kitties. And just to remind you, uh, Matt is creaming uh, Pickens at this point. Uh, at- he, ha- he has like gotten the key, the car keys. He is like the ignition is turning on, and I am like I- I've been like like whacked with a machete, so I'm like hobbling. So I'm not like completely there yet. But as we know, that means nothing in a good slasher movie. Well, it, it's, it reminds me of that scene uh, in Jason Goes to Hell where the SWAT team comes down. and mm-hmm. <laughs> Yeah. Like, but, um, yeah, but Pickens is not quite there yet. But let's see how this last round uh, ends up. So in the final round, uh, our final girl contestant, Matt here, squares off with the killer in a game called Lose Your Footing. Either the killer or the contestant may answer, but they must do so with caution. In this round, a wrong answer has dire consequences. A wrong answer means you take a step backward. So, gentlemen, are you ready? I'm always ready, baby. Let's do it. All right, so best of luck to you. Thank you. But all the same, we want to kill you. So, Pickens, bring your A game in this round. Oh, boy. All right, question. I only have a D game. (laughs) Oh, a D game? 
Yeah. I'm always out for the D. Oh. <laughs> you, that means you're looking for the D game. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Um, so Officer Mooney gets a phone call from a frantic townsperson whose wife was apparently taken away in what? A balloon. That is right. Question number 12. The Killer Clown Wiki fandom page lists a bunch of Killer Clown weapons. Which of these weapons isn't listed? A. The Red Nose Bombs. B. Acid Pies. Or C. Bubblegum Pistol. The Acid Pies. Oh, no, 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 no. I'm sorry. The first one. The first one. The, uh, the, the, the Red, red Nose Bombs. Red Nose Bombs. Okay. Uh, yeah, I don't know why I said Acid Pies. <laughs> I'll give you that. Yeah. Just because you want acid or pies. Yeah. Or both. Basically, yeah. 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 Like, let, give me some acid and then put your pie in my face. Yeah. Mm-hmm. yeah. Cream pie. Okay. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Question number 13. When a killer cl- That's hard to say. When a killer clown visits the police station, it finds Officer Mooney reading a magazine. The face paging us has a headline advertising what kind of challenge? A 9mm challenge? Like the 9mm challenge? Millimeter? Yep. Millimeter, yeah. Good one. Yeah. Wow. That, that one, like, it stuck yeah. with me. It stuck with me. Wow. Good for you. Yeah. Okay. I thought I was going to trip you up with that one. Mm-hmm. Now, okay. I, I know that someone already knows the answer to this one. So, get your buzzer finger ready. Oh, boy. The Chiodo Brothers called the giant clown at the end by a clever nickname that references... Clownzilla. That is right. That references another famous giant monster, Clownzilla. All right. Now, um, Matt, you're going to be our second male final girl ever. Yes, girl. I would like to thank my family. <laughs> I'd like to thank everyone who helped me study for this and everyone who watched this movie. Did with you me. know you were nominated? It was an honor. I just I didn't think I would go any further than this. Oh my goodness. I always die. I, well, I mean, we have one question left, but um, uh, a year before Killer Clowns was uh, in that, a uh, well, year before it premiered, uh, hunky actor John Allen Nelson played the starring role in the aptly titled movie Honk. What is the plot of Honk? A. A country boy goes to the big city with dreams of becoming a model. He's quickly signed by a popular agency, but at the price of getting caught up in a life of drugs, sex, and crippling vanity. B. A computer nerd makes a deal with the devil and gets a hot new beefcake body. C. A beefcake model gets tired of only being liked for his good looks, so he makes a deal with the devil to find a woman who appreciates him for his mind. I'm just going to go with the last one. That is incorrect. <clears throat> Which is the one? I'm going to guess it's the second one. That is correct. Oh. But I would watch either of the first two. I, would, both yeah, I know. Pretty they good. both all you should, sound you should pitch these. Pitch yeah. These. Well, uh, so as I predicted, because it doesn't take much predicting, Matt, you are our second male final girl ever. Oh, thank you guys! Congratulations! You ended up with um, you ended up with seventeen uh, steps, and Pickens had seven. So um, that that uh, bottomless uh, mimosa bar didn't help you. Didn't work out too much, and also because I've never seen the movie until like today. Yes, well. and Pickens, you've been giving me nightmares for two weeks already. Just getting ready for this, so you kind of already won. I mean, oh, yeah. so you you were you were saying earlier you you were thanking a bunch of people for helping you study and this yes. and that. Yeah. So did you actually do that? Did you actually like study up and all that? Yeah. Yeah. I, oh uh, I blocked out uh, six times to watch the movie counting today. And uh, I had my brother watch one with me. Um, I've been practicing the 60 second synopsis with anyone who will listen um, I've been looking up trivia. Uh, a friend of mine looked up a couple of other articles and would quiz me. Um, oh, yeah. Okay, so this is like the this is the motivation. I need to. <laughs> yeah, I've been in training. It's like clown Girl, school. Well, you know what? You deserve the win then. Absolutely. I actually couldn't. I couldn't find a lot of stuff on the movie. So, what questions did I not ask that I should have asked? Ooh. So I was waiting for what order the shadow puppets were. It started out as a oh, bunny uh, rabbit, then mm-hmm. an elephant, then Washington crossing the Delaware, then a sexy dancing lady, then a Tyrannosaurus. Yeah. I also thought I was going to need to answer a lot more questions about the kills. They killed a lot of people that we didn't cover. Mm-hmm. Like there was a woman in sexy lingerie opening the door to a clown pizza delivery. Like, 
like that's a thing. Yeah. Or there was Jim's wife who thought that he had sent her a candy gram. Oh, Jim. Jim's a good was dude. Was this you? Yeah. Yeah. Um, you know what? I would I not be. You su- were, I thought you were going to ask um, the sim- What is similar about the Blob and Killer Clowns of Outer Space is that mm-hmm. the old man, um, an mm-hmm. old geezer living on a farm with a dog, is the first victim. Yeah, because you know how much I love the Blob. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, and there are all sorts of other things too. I mean, I feel like almost the cotton candy dissolving the the people and, mm-hmm. and breaking breaking them down is very Blob like. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, Speaking of the. Mm-hmm. Uh, in the commentary, the director says that the cotton candy was made from a webbing machine, and they promised it was safe to use in the cars, but they ended up spending $3,000 to replace all of the vinyl that they ruined because that stuff is acidic. Oh. Um, so so don't. not the acid pies, the acid cotton candy. <laughs> yeah. Oh, my gosh. Mm-hmm. So what else? What else did I miss? Ooh. Um... I thought you were going to ask me about the theme song, which was by the Dickies, the Dickies but in yep. the movie referred to as the Doormen. Um, and for whatever reason, the, the Dickies had it on an EP called Killer Clowns from Outer Space. Um, it doesn't sound anything like the the opening credits, which I think is listed as performed by the Dickies, but I guess they just totally re-recorded it for, for the other one. Yeah. Mm. Um, so in terms of uh, where this stands with horror movies that you've seen, um, I know you selected it, but is this your favorite? or I don't think it is. And the more that I've watched it this week, the lower it's gone. It's, oh, really? Uh, it's, wow. It's transphobic. It's uh, really toxic masculinity a lot. Wait, um, are you seeing a movie distributed by Trans World Pictures is transphobic? They have let the trans down. How dare they? Well, but this is 1988. It's so 1988. According to straight people at the time, trans people didn't exist. Didn't exist um so talk talk more about the transphobia sure i think um in their attempt to make their lead guy a a wacky cut up guy he's making up these silly freaks in a freak show to talk about the clowns and the first one he picks is ms 50 50 half man half woman the perfect double date which is just not playing right in 2019 and then of course the third person he picks is belinda the bulimic wonder watch her binge and purge before your very eyes yeah that one was bad that's not a joke like that's not funny and to tell that to to a female actor makes me wonder like what he thinks about body image yeah, yeah. or just how like easy it is like oh yeah you want to be skinny just throw up it's fine binge and purr just okay i did feel that her relationship to him changed after that moment I hope it did. I, yeah. I hope so. I mean, like, I love the thruple idea. They all had, a, like, oh. a really hot, like, double penetrated threesome or something. Or they all, like, just fucked each other. But also, maybe mm-hmm. she should have just gone back with the cop guy. Because he's actually a decent dude. He was a good dude. He stood up for the rights of those two kids that they threw in the in the police station mm-hmm. jail. Yeah. Um, but, yes, I do love the idea of the three of them together. That would have been so yeah. hot. And there was mutual hugging at the end. There was a lot of, there was a lot of, like, sexual tension between the two mm-hmm. guys guys between yeah. her and the two guys. Yeah, it was yeah. a lot. Yeah. So I did like that. That part stood out. Mm-hmm. Uh, although I, I will say that he was very quick to abandon uh, other people that may have been alive in the bubbles, right? Yeah. At the end. Um, but yeah, a lot of people died in this movie. Yeah, I was, like a lot. I like was, almost the entire town. <laughs> I yeah. was worried you were going to ask for like a kill count, and you can't because they kill the whole town. Yeah, they really did. So, and it, it's really evident when you go into Especially the you spaceship. See, like, all the cotton candy. Yeah, when you go in the spaceship earlier in the movie, you don't see half. You don't see nearly as much cotton candy there. But mm-hmm. um, they got they, they got shit done. Mm-hmm. Yeah, they like came. They had their makeup on. They went like went to the drugstore, and they killed like. The entire town. Almost. I would book them. Oh my gosh! And we didn't even go over the hanky code. Oh my god! Yes, there were hankies everywhere. Yes, there was like there was they were advertising fisting, bottoming, like every oral sex. That dog Pooh Bear was so wait so for so many. people that yes. do not know about hanky codes. Oh, please dear explain, girl, dear children. Mm-hmm. Once upon a time, a long time ago, before, before the internet, in before any of far, us were away. born. Yes. Um, if you wanted a particular kind of sex, you couldn't just ask for it. Mm-mm. So you had to take a colored bandana and put it in your left or right back pocket. Left, I believe, was receiving, and right was, I believe, um, giving. 
And the codes would be things like... Um, Red would be fisting. Yes, so I so, want to get fisted. Or, or I can fist, which everyone can fist. I mean, technically, some people don't Oh, you fist. should write a children's book. Oh. I know. Everyone can fist. Everyone can fist, if you believe. Yeah. It's, it's, yeah. it's like sports. It's, it's very... So, yeah, red was fisting. Light blue was oral sex. Um, I think we can guess what yellow was. We know, we know what yellow is, and we definitely know what brown is. Mm-hmm. Oh. Mm-hmm. Brown is the color of poo. But that's the code that that's <laughs> it's very true. Well but that's the code that like a lot of men would use back in the day before, you know, you know, before grinder, before mm-hmm. chat rooms. Like that is literally like their code that they would use to like advertise their like sexuality. Uh so one of my mentors, uh he's uh eighty Two, and he mentioned to me once, and I think this was even in that movie Far From Heaven, the one mm-hmm. that starred yeah. Julianne Moore. Maybe I'm making that up in my head. But he said that when you would see a man uh, with an umbrella when it wasn't raining, when there was no call mm-hmm. for, for rain, that that was kind of a version of a hanky code, like, mm-hmm. I'm gay, so, you know, chat me up if oh, you want. Oh, wow. Yeah, so. Yeah. Um, yeah. It's, you know, different time and, like, you Why know. the hell are we talking about this when we should be talking about killer clowns? How do I we... mean, it's semi-relevant. There was a lot of, ha- there was a lot of handkerchiefs, so multicolored handkerchiefs in the movie. And yeah. this movie is kind of a gay icon movie. Like, mm-hmm. the clowns are definitely drag queens. There is, like, some sexual tension between some men. It's it's a lot. And yep. I think that there was at least coding for the, the two kids that they arrested at the beginning of the movie. Mm-hmm. Uh, being on two guys on a date. Um, I don't know if that was just the the mean cop doing like homophobic slurs, but yeah. we were talking. That why were two guys sharing a bottle of wine in a park? Wine emphasis on wine. And yeah, one of them was it was like, Chablis. Yeah, <laughs> and one of them was like a goth kind of clown inspired look, and yeah. the other one had nothing in common. These guys weren't friends. I think that if they weren't actually hooking up, then we couldn't explain why they were there. Yeah, that makes sense. Um, So, you said that Killer Clowns is moving down on your list. It is. So, what are some of your favorite movies? Horror Uh, movies. So, my... My go-to favorite horror movie is going to be the 1968 George Romero Night of the Living Dead, Mm -hmm. which I know Pickens doesn't like. Well, Well... There's a future episode. We'll talk about it's, it. It's fine. You know what? It's fine. Not it's everything fine. is for everybody. You know what? We live in the United States. Mm-hmm. Pickens has a right to be as wrong as he wants to be. I believe you mean you're ignorant. Yep. True. Yep. Um, so I, I Stop love... It. I You're love ignorant. that one. That's a that's a go to. I love franchises. I love the kind of movies where you just get like eight and they're not like not worth anything. I love the Nightmare on Elm Street movies. I love the Friday Thirteenth movies. I love the Halloween movies. I love um, the Child's Play movies. Uh, I think. Are you going to see the new one? I am. The trailer looked really good. Yeah. I, we've had some concerns of what the story is going to be, but you know, I've seen all of them up to this point. I might as well keep going. Right. Might as well. I've, I've never really gotten into child's play. I think mm-hmm. I mentioned this on a previous episode, mm-hmm. so I'm game for the new one. I am too. Um, I, I for me, it's not a win little... or lose. It's, you yeah. know, it's, um, yeah. that's how I am too. I'm yeah. not like, ah, but yeah. like, eh, we'll yeah. see it. Yeah. And I, I've met some of the actors at horror conventions from the Child's Play series, and they all just seem like genuinely nice people who are proud of what they did and happy with it. And I think um, looking back, with the exception of I, Seed of Chucky was pretty worthless, but the rest of them mm-hmm. maintained either being fun, scary, or funny parody type um, in a way that I think um, was more consistent than a lot of the other franchises. Have you met Brad Dorf? Not yet. Okay, because he's amazing. Mm-hmm. For me... Uh, his his killer role, his standout role, was in Exorcist Part Three. Like, oh my god, the yes. scariest! He did mm-hmm. such a good job in that. In that, um, but yeah, yeah. And for me, I think my favorite Brad Dorf would be the Rob Zombie Halloween's. Oh yeah. Um, say what you will about the movies, I, I can't defend a lot of them, but I think he was stellar as this very haunted character. Mm-hmm. Especially in the sequel. Well, I actually like the first Rob Zombie uh, Halloween. Personally. I like parts of it. Yeah. But again, I'm not married to mm-hmm. Halloween either. It's not yeah. like my favorite franchise. So, yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah. So I'm not I'm not easily offended by um, even the the latest one, the um, H four zero. I like the four, I liked it. I thought it was mm-hmm. good. It was it was it was fine. Yep, yeah, there were some roadblocks, but yeah, yeah. yeah. Well, Matthew, I am honored to be 
not I'm honored not to kill you. I don't know, like how Ooh. yeah, what what is my I, I got like smacked in the face with a machete, but like my hand is still coming out of the grave at the end credits. Yeah. 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 yeah it, like it pans in on your eyes, which are closed. Yeah, but and all of a sudden they, they open. Yeah. yeah. I, I see you drive off in the cop car, you're traumatized mm-hmm. for the no, rest he's of your in the life. back of the ambulance. Back the ambulance. Oh, oh yeah. yeah, back in the ambulance. Yeah, like where's Brad? Where's life? Yeah. Yes, I've been bleeding. Yeah. Mm-hmm. You've been through you've been through it. Pickens, I've never been so appreciative of my life as I have been right now. <laughs> You're welcome. You have it. Being yeah. this close to death. And you get the fabulous prize. <gasps> fabulous yes. prize. It's a very fabulous. I love it. Thank you. You're welcome. Mm-hmm. It's been so much fun meeting you. And yes, since you are girl. a final girl, yes. you need to come back and defend your title oh at some God. point. Uh, we'll have like an all-star season. Yeah, That's we need to cool. do that. Yes. yes. Yeah. Yeah, Cocktail Party Massacre 500. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, that'd be great. Yeah. Okay, I'd um, love to come back. And when you come back, you have to do a, a movie that is higher on your list. It will be. Yes. But I have to say, even though this is moving down your list, I really, I really love enjoyed it. watching this again because I it like was this. like going home, uh, going to back to my childhood. I think I like this more than the Blob. Uh, well, again, you live in the United States. You can be as wrong. I as you can't want be to as be. wrong as I can. Yeah. And this time, I'm Team Pickens. Really? I know. I know. Oh, I'm, I'm, I'm like, flip flopping. I like the Blob. Flip flops are always good in a relationship. It's important to. They're give. easy to get off your feet. It's sometimes really important to receive. Mm-hmm. Sure. I love receiving gifts. So I just want to tell our listeners at home: uh, believe it or not, this is not a sex podcast. <laughs> I, I know that it can get really confusing sometimes because it seems and we're like we're not a weather podcast. We haven't been for a while, actually. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I'm proud yeah, of this. Is, We've this avoided, is... but can we talk about the weather? <laughs> it was so yeah. nice yesterday. It was so nice. Yeah. I feel like I should be on the front porch slip, uh, sipping like a mint julep or something <gasps> on a I, rocking chair. So some of my friends did just come back from Iceland and they brought back like some like just liquor from Iceland and um, we tried I had probably one of the best like uh, whiskeys I've ever had in my life um, and also this like I don't I forget what it's called but it's a liqueur and it's like favored with like it's Bjork that's what it's called it's oh. Bjork oh. and it's like filled all with about birchwood it. and okay. it's like sweet and smoky it's wow. really good Ooh. you had me at smoky yeah I love I love really, yeah. like, and that's what the scotch was that I had yeah. it was very smoke it was a smoky scotch it was really good well you know I'm a huge Bjork fan so right? I, I exactly. need to try this yeah it's really good okay yeah well please do bring over next time absolutely yes. All right. Well, Matt, thanks once again. Congratulations. When we do Evil Dead, we should get that because <gasps> yes, tree rape. trees. Yeah. Wood. Yeah. 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 Mm-hmm. You yeah. know, because tree rape. Exactly. Because tree rape. I mean, All right. yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. All right. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Well, uh, kitties, if you want to follow us on Instagram or Facebook, you can find us at Cocktail Party Massacre. You can follow us on Twitter at CPM Horror Pod because Twitter always got to be different. Uh, you can email us at uh, Cocktail Party Massacre at gmail.com. Com. And if you want to become a final girl, like we said earlier, you just go to www.cocktailpartymassacre.com slash contact, fill out the form. We will get in contact with you and hopefully as soon as possible. And then we will get schedule you to be on our show. Yes. Um, so thank you, as always, to Zalatan for letting us use her wonderful music for our intro and outro. And Amy May Pop Art for literally making our, our t-shirt and just... She's an amazing person. I love She's you, an bitch. amazing person. Yeah, so if you do want a CPM uh, t-shirt, please go to Amy May Pop Art on Etsy. She also does these amazing posters with, like, little pop icon horror, like, villains and stuff. It's yeah. so great. Yeah, while you're there, obviously shop around and get other things. Yeah. Um, I actually got one of our t-shirts. and it's.